Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the uh, DFG family. Welcome to DFG webinar that is titled Vegetation as a Remedial Measure Against Erosion and Silo Landslides in Steep Soil Slopes. My name is Pavlo Stirologu, and I am the External Relations Officer of the European Federation of Geologists. I am also the coordinator of the FD panel of uh, the experts on natural hazards and climate change, and also editor in chief of uh, the European Geologist uh, Journal. I will be the host of this uh, webinar. Um, as you know, um, the European Federation of Geologists is periodically organizing webinars to foster the professional development of fellow geologists and also to increase public awareness of. Uh, the importance of geology. I am uh, delighted to present Michael Annes uh, today, which uh, Michael works as a geotechnical engineer and senior advisor for the Swedish Transport Administration in Harnosand. I hope I pronounce it well. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, and in the central in Sweden. He's also involved in the, uh, on road uh, projects, rain wells, uh, British construction from planning to completion of uh, the infrastructure. He also provides advice to the maintenance department of uh, the Swedish Transport Administration concerning landslides, erosion and floods, which is of course the topic of uh, today's webinar. He also previously worked as a consultant in Sweden and Finland. He's bilingual, as uh, we already talked about it. And uh, before that, he was a researcher for the Renlands Foundation at the Abo Academy University in Turku in, uh, in Finland. Uh, during uh, Michael's presentation, we invite you all you to propose questions to him using the question and answers function that you will see at the bottom of your screen. We will select some of these questions for the question uh, session. And uh, uh, this will be, of course, answered after Michael's presentation. Uh, what I suggest is relax, grab a cup of coffee if you have, and uh, sit back and enjoy Michael's uh, presentation. Now, without any further delay, please, Michael, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mikhail Lones, uh, and as was presented, I work as a senior geotechnical advisor for the Swedish Transport Administration. Uh, to be clear, so I'm not a scientist, but I use science, so we, we, we try to be scientific. And I work mostly in ongoing investment projects, building roads and bridges, but also sometimes help maintenance, maintenance of roads concerning, for example, landslides and settlement and erosion and so on. You could say geotechnical hazards, uh, and, and that's uh, some of the topics today. The picture you see shows our project group visiting Bolzano in Italy uh, in the year of 2002. You could say that it was the start of the project and we studied the methods used in Italy. I'm standing uh, 20 years younger in this picture and the project group and our guides here on the right. So this was the starter. Uh, and the project group consisted of these agencies. And here are the authors of the articles we made after this. Predominantly, uh, uh, Karin Lundström, and Mar Mo Mo Martin Andersson, and also Kai Rolf, who is the, you could say, the father of engineering geology, engineering biology, as we call it here in, in, in Sweden. He is from Lund. Uh, 
the presentation will show an overview of the evol evolving, uh, you could say, trial and error approach be used when vegetative remedial measures are applied. So we, it could be a trial and error. And um, I will uh, tell about the background. Then we go through some test sites. In some aspect, that some of the test sites were live action uh, building roads, but we, we were allowed to use this method in those roads. And then we talked about we talk about where we have used this method and evolving of these methods and the, in future slopes. And then I talk about some reports that we have made and a summary. So this is the overview. And the picture, of course, is from Italy, as we see some of the methods they used there. Uh, Project was uh, a project vegetation as a mean for slope stabilization started with a literature review, uh, mainly by Kari Lundström and the Swedish Geotechnical Institute who made that literature. It was a process to understand the science behind this method. How can we, how it, does it work geotechnically? And then we started to look for test sites where we could test this method, how it would work in, in real life. And this was summarized in a, a report that's, it, that's available. And again, the pictures are taken from Italy when we visited the Bolzano region, a very, very lovely place. Then why we, why are we doing this? Well, we have big problems with erosion and landslide, as shown in the pictures. Uh, mainly in this picture, we see shallow landslides. Uh, and this is due to our post-glacial and also pre-glacial uh, silty and clay soils. Uh, the pre uh, the post glacial soils are nearer the coast and the uh, uh, pre glacial soils are on in, nearer the mountains the calorolites that range in this area so the the, the silty and the clay soils and of of course we have a topography with hills and mountains and steep slopes very steep slopes and the climate we have is also uh, extreme in some extent. We have, uh, for example, thaw, and and we have periods with different um, temperature. Temperature, and uh, also the groundwater issues with some, in some cases, high pore water pressure in the soil. So this is this is the challenges. So we wanted to see how can we manage these uh, uh, shallow landslides. So we have in challenges in general, shallow landslides, one to two meter. We have tow effects, poor water pressure, and several groundwater pressures because of the layering in the soil. We have uh, clay, sand, clay, and so forth, which makes the groundwater uh, situation hard to predict. And of course, we have some problems with water from the road surface, which uh, causes erosion. And of course, we have the temperature Temperature variation, as, as I told you. The deeper landslides, we have, we have also the deeper landslides, but um, they are of, often uh, post glacial clays. 
and they are not dealt with with vegetation. We have to use other methods, geotechnical measures methods. So this uh, concerns uh, merely only those uh, shadow line slides. Traditionally, for these uh, problems, you could call them, we use grass. Sometimes works, sometimes not. We use uh, re soil reinforcement. In this case, we see in the left picture soil nails, but they don't always work as well as uh, as good as uh, because we get um, erosion beneath uh, the mats. And uh, of course, crushed rock or gravel like in this picture. This is not uh, approved by our landscape architects. They don't like it and it's not uh, always a pretty view. The, um, okay, we jumped right into a test site. So we saw the problems. So we wanted to test these uh, methods uh, and um, this is an investment project. A new road was built here in uh, Biskorden, shown in the map. And here you see Sweden in all the length. And my I sit here today in Hanna Sand, at the co in the coast coastal region here, in the high coast region. And Biskorden is uh, somewhat inland. So we were allowed to use some slopes for tests. We, we made them steeper than it usually are made and, and tr tried to use uh, the method. The problems we often have is erosion, frost heaving, thawing and layered soils. So we made some uh, slopes with uh, preventive measures like hedge and brush layers and grass. And here you see the, the, the plant name in English. I'm not a bi biologist, so I can't, uh, uh, and uh, Latin is not my strong point, so, but you can read them, them those. So we made these uh, tests to see how does this method work in these conditions. In here we see uh, Karin Lundström, who is a PhD in geotechnics, who is the project? Who was the project manager for this uh, project, the vegetation project? Um, and in these uh, uh, slopes, we used uh, experience and methods from Bolzano, Italy, in these test slopes. So we learned from our uh, visit there how they used this. So we tried to use them here. Well, experience, experiences from uh, road 87. First year, we had the uh, bare rooted plants flourished, thick cuttings flourished, Thinner cutting dried out and grass did not successfully, successfully sprout. So some problems, some success. But then in May 2006, we got saliflaction from thawing and rainfall. Hedge brush layers slid, some buried, and the test site was terminated and the slope was covered with crushed stones. So you think this would be a disaster. Uh, some, um, there were some misses in the communication. So they had used a wrong math in the, this area. They are not a drainage mat. They were not, they, they didn't use a drainage, drainage mat as we has, was supposed to do. To do. So, so th there were some, some problems.
But with the failure of the slope, we learned and showed how we should do in the future, how we, uh, what exp the experience we used in the future project. So we didn't, we could have stopped here and said, now this, this, this doesn't work here. Uh, let's shut down everything. But uh, we proceeded. So the next site is a rebuild of an existing road in uh, more in the, you could call the Alpine region or a, a mountainous region in Budalen, shown in the picture. And um, we were contacted by the project manager. How can we avoid excavation of the high mountain slopes? Because if we start uh, digging in, in those slopes, we are soon on the mountain top if you want to uh, have the right angle on the slope. So we suggested that we use vegetation as a method here. So it was a, a little gamble to, to try it, but he was uh, keen on trying it. But we used our experiences from road 87 in Biscorden to, to, to uh, make this happen. As you see, they are very steep slopes, merely moraine on, and, and silty moraine and sandy silty moraine. As you see, it's hard to, for excavator to come up on the, to do the work. What do we have for problems here? We have the groundwater, we have frost heaving, we have erosion, as you see in the pictures. As preventive measures, we uh, did smoothing of the slope crests, hedge layers, as in Viscoden, coconut mat with plants, hydro seeding, and drainage, and cutting of uh, trees. So that was the uh, uh, measures. Well, how did it go? In 2003, it looked like that, 2006, like that, 2003, 2006. So it showed we had very marginal signs. of soliflaxion during the towing or any periods. The cedars trees, which were previously cut, sprouted nicely. Good growth of plants in hedge layers. Grass grew well, especially when seeded below coconut mud. So we had a good experience here. So from disaster to success or nearly success. Of course, every every project has some problems, but we were positively, we got a positive experience. And as you can see, the method evolves through experiences, trial and error, you could say. And the next text, test site is, uh, uh, Road 975 in Nesoker. And you see in the picture, as I told earlier, I sit here in Hanasan at the coast, Botnian Bay. Stockholm is here, and, uh, and this is the southern part of Sweden. So in, we are in, the, we could say, in the middle of Sweden. This is an existing road with big challenges, very big challenges. Uh, uh, my son is in the picture. He's about 10 years old and looks at the, over the beautiful view. Now he's 28 and has a master in geology. So, so that, that, that time goes by and uh, 
it's a very beautiful place and if you have a possibility visit it you could visit it uh, earlier we were here in in Budalen and then in uh, Biscorden in this this area here so now we have moved a little more north northwest northeast but here we have new soil conditions it's uh, different from these previous maybe Biscorden has some similarities Uh, this uh, is a very steep slope. Uh, in Swedish, we call it Nipa. A Nipa. The road is situated in a steep slope, up to 60 meters above the river, Ongemanelven. The co soil consists mainly of silt, with layers of sand and clay. In this part of Sweden, as I've told you, these are called Nipa. And the uh, soil uh, to the slope inclination varies between one to one, one to 1.5. So it's very, very steep. And the stability without reinforcement is too low, you could say. You should have with the um, Undrained should be 1.5 and uh, combined undrained drained uh, factor of safety should be 1.35. So we have too low safety. And why is this? How can this slope stand this uh, uh, steep? Uh, uh, we know now we have uh, a newly newly found uh, um, research in this and they we have a higher friction angle in this silt in this area than elsewhere higher friction angle we have also negative pore pressure it's a kind, kind of uh, vacuum <laughs> cleaner in the soil that uh, sucks the soil and uh, this is very uh, exciting. In the picture, you can see that this has been repaired in, in, in uh, over several years. You have seen soil nailing, for example, here. And these buildings are, are very excited, very placed in an exciting place. The road is. Um, the history road is long and troublesome. It was installed uh, over a hundred years ago. And you have landslides repaired with crushed rock, gabion walls are constructed, a drainage measure installed, reinforcement with tor isolation, displacement of the road and new drainage measures, soil nailing, Repair of the soil nailing, new soil nailing, landslides again. And here in 2005, we decided, as you see, it's only traditional methods used. So in 2005, we decided to do something to prevent future landslides and make some tests. We needed new ideas. So there, therefore, we turn to uh, this project with, with vegetation to, to, to uh, see if we could use vegetation as a complement to other methods. So in this picture, we, or this slide, we see uh, there are several test sites. If I could talk several hours about this step, but I would choose one, just one. And this shows an uh, example of tests. Board hardcore your techniques, such as soil nailing and vegetation were used. 
So we have, uh, we tried a new method also calling uh, uh, angle irons. And then we use solid cuttings in the between. Uh, and in some cases, even steel plates. And we drilled from the road, not from the, in the slope. So we saved, uh, we made the road safe by, by doing this, uh, this method. And also the grass seeding and cocoa mats. So these solid cuttings are very interesting because they are not one half meter or so, so they are up to three meter long in three rows. And here we see some pictures of it. So um, uh, first we drilled a hole and then um, we, uh, then the salix cuttings was put in the hole in the ground as shown in the picture. So this was the uh, idea. Uh, the, uh, the person who was mostly engaged in this was um, a geotechnical engineer called Mangrotrin. Who, who, and there are, uh, because I was involved and my roots are in Finland, they started to call them Finnish pins or Finnish uh, sticks. It was an internal joke. Finnish sticks or Finnish cuttings. And uh, in the spring we saw, we, we made these as we made also in, I, I, I forgot to tell in Bydale, in the winter, we did these works in the frozen soil. But in the spring, we saw that the uh, salix cuttings flourished. So that was a success in a way. Uh, we extracted some salix cuttings and we saw that the roots were, were growing. The idea with these salix cuttings was that they, uh, they were there to stabilize the, uh, uh, against shallow landslides. So they would, uh, they, it's the, um, the idea is that they drink water. It's a kind of drainage of the groundwater. And this increase the effective stress in the soil. And therefore you uh, don't get these uh, landslides. And also the roots bind the soil. So do you get uh, like a your, your grid in the soil? And because you, the roots, the, the vegetation uh, uses the water, the groundwater, you get less thawing effects. So it has multiple purposes. The negative uh, part of this, but that we had a bad growth of salix cuttings. Uh, due to bad root growth in the pre-drilled holes. They were too big. So they had the bad soil contact. So that, that was a, a, a mis, mishap, you could say. We didn't understand that when we made this test, but we learned something from it. And, um, so the, these uh, solid cuttings worked. Other uh, safety measure were we, uh, together with the above geotechnical matters were a plan of maintenance for vegetation and the soil nails, curb stones, so we don't get uh, erosion from the road, road, so the water goes down in wells, 
and monitoring measurements. Uh, we used the Norwegian method to see if we got the heavy raining, heavy rain, we could uh, send a geotechnical engineer to look. And if it was too, uh, too big a rainfall, we could close the road. So this was a, a, a new method used here with the weather station. Well, uh, we learned uh, a lot from the road 975 in Esoka. Uh, that, um, and uh, so when we got a new challenge, road 6 through 8 in Leiden, shown on the map here. Uh, a little bit nearer the coast. We learned from uh, Nesoka that we should fill the drilled holes with sand slurry for better growth of the salix roots. So then we filled this. And then we also used geogrids in the road construction and crushed stone, which is shown here. And here we see the, the, the salix cuttings in the, in the, and we got success here because all the, the nearly all the, the uh, salix cuttings grew well, as we see in the picture. So we all uh, again learn from the previous projects uh, and um, got a better result. And then um, now we come to the, you could say, this day or the, this, uh, this, is, uh, this was built three years ago in uh, Holland. It's not in Netherlands. It's uh, actually in uh, western parts of Sweden, northwestern part of Sweden here, in this dot, in the mountainous region uh, near Ore, where, we, where is a big uh, alpine center. You have alpine skiing, and here we we used a new method again. Uh, we used crushed stone and then topsoil, crushed stone here, and then topsoil and coconut mat and hydro seeding, no salix cuttings. This um, slope we wanted a, a little bit steeper to 1.17 because we, we, do, we don't want to build a retaining wall. Uh, uh, and, and then I suggest we could use this method instead. And this is also better uh, for a landscape architectural view instead of only using crushed stones. So this uh, is another another and why do we use crushed stones here? Is that's to uh, we have to have crushed stone to increase the effective stresses in the soil, in a certain silty soils. It's a weight on the soil, so it doesn't slide away. You could say, and you get drainage with water drains down to this lower point. So this is another method used. And later, uh, last summer, this was uh, now two years ago, this was completed. And we used uh, the same method as in road in, the, in Holland. This is road 83 in Estabal. We used the same method as in Eiffjorton. Uh, Holland, uh, 
and uh, as in the other place we used crushed stone we wanted a steep a slow, slope here one to 1.5 because uh, to avoid using a retaining wall we, 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 we uh, it's a uh, more expensive and uh, not necessary if we use this method. Uh, and the growth of the grass and plants makes the slope more adapted to the landscape and better for the climate also, so you could say. So I see this is, is uh, uh, another angle of the vegetative use of vegetation, use of vegetation in our slopes. Well, next we jump to another use, a new area of use of vegetation, vegetative, vegetative remedial measures. This is, here we use the vegetation against erosion in river, in Setnown, in Kowland, used, you see here. We use meadow mats, topsoil, and then rounded stones also. Here you can see, but that, that has nothing, but that's for the fish, because of the fish. And uh, also crushed stones to, so if this, uh, for safety reasons. If this doesn't work, we have crust stones under. But this makes the slopes look uh, more, they, they adapt to the, the nature. And here we also use coconut mats in the slopes above this, this um, above water level. And this road is built just now, so it's an ongoing project. So we will see how this will work in the future. I will come back and tell you if you want. Well, the future work, so this will be built this autumn, we will start with this uh, project. It's a new method. Again, we use both crushed stones and salix cuttings. And a topsoil and coconut mud. This is a very, very steep, um, uh, very, very, we, we, we cut into a, a hill. You can see contours of the hill here. And we cut into that, and uh, and it, this silty soil is very very sensitive to thaw and and, and uh, rain, and uh, so so we have to use this method here. It's very similar conditions as in Nesoka, which I showed earlier. So the so left there is here, Nesoka is a little more here. They are, as I said, very sensitive to soliflaxion when it thaws. And the crushed stones together with the salix increase together the effective stresses in the, and bind the soil and um, for hopefully uh, we don't get any, any landslides, uh, shallow landslides in this. Uh, so this will be very, very exciting to see how it works. We have both drainage and, and uh, other methods here. Well, now we are coming to the end of the uh, presentation. There is a final report. Uh, I'm sorry, it's in Swedish. I'm sorry about that, but you can always look at the pictures. Uh, and uh, 
we have over in our regulations we have some use uh, we have used in our regulations and then there are in some in Swedish other reports from Nesoker. If you have Swedish friends, you can have some bedside reading together. And here you see all the dots where what I have talked about. We have some got some attention in the media also about these methods. Summary. You, as I told, it had, has been a trial and error process, but we haven't given, it has gone on for over 20 years now. It has been interesting and rewarding. Should we have more research? Probably, but uh, we will see if it, it will, will go on, uh, if we get some interested in this topic. Yes, we will use it in future projects, as was shown in, uh, in the uh, slides. The big issue in this, uh, for me, I think, is the cooperation between biology, geology, geotechnics, landscape architects, hydro hydrogeologists, and project manager and us others because that's the big uh, challenge always in such projects i i my my uh, experience says that technology is 20 percent and communication is 80 percent so you have to communicate and understand between those different uh, professions what you mean, what, what, uh, so the a biologist or a landscape architect understands the geotechnical engineer and so forth. That's the big uh, challenge, I can say. I could call it a hybrid method. I don't know if it's, if it's right, but that's my idea. That's all. Uh, in the picture, you see, we see 6,000 year old rock carvings, these red dots here, made after the la latest ice age. From ne This is in Nesoka. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Any questions? Well, Michael, indeed, many, many, many thanks for your presentation. I must admit that I really enjoyed uh, the pace of your presentation because it allowed me to, to absorb what you've been talking about. And it was really on a very relaxed mood, which is, I really appreciate it. Uh, and it seems that I am not the only one uh, because we do have some good questions and which I would like to discuss with you over the next uh, uh, 15 minutes until four o'clock. That's the time frame uh, yes. that we have. And the way I understood it, it's uh, basically that you presented what we would call these days nature-based solutions. Yes. Uh, they have multiple benefits. Uh, they're also more aesthetically appealing. And uh, I hope or I, I believe that they are more cheaper than the traditional ones, also when it comes in terms of, of time and durability. Yes. yes. Uh, so I will start with the questions then. I will start mm -hmm. with a, uh, one that uh, it's, it's quite interesting. It is uh, why using coconut instead of a local plant? Uh, because we have seen that it works in our, in our, uh, our area. So we, that's why we use it. So you, you, and, you started with something else and you have some trial and errors, as you said. And, uh... Yeah, you, you, you could say that. So we have seen it work. So we haven't, um, have you any suggestion what we could work that, uh, what would- Pinus, could... Pinus, 
P, something like that. That's one. No, of, uh, okay, okay, okay. I I can uh, if you write to me, I I could uh, try it also if if it's uh, so, so come with suggestions. Uh, I'm I'm up to it. Okay, lovely, lovely. How how the whole project started? I mean, what was uh, the story? Uh, uh, that, that's interesting, Pavlos, because uh, I was at lunch uh, 30th October 1998 with uh, 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 your technical engineer. We had to have a project meeting, and then I called, call, was called out for uh, um, a landslide. It was happening a landslide, so they called me. So I have to rush from the lunch to the place. It was not, not a full landslide, but it, uh, it was a settlement in the road. So it was on an ongoing. And from that on, we had to find a method to prevent this um, landslide. So we used hardcore soil nailing, but then we saw what will we do with the uh, shallow landslides? This, Big nails, they go deep, they take uh, care of the uh, big landslides. What do we do with the. And then Magnus Ruin, I uh, uh, mentioned him earlier, he said, Michael, I know about vegetation as a method. We could use that. We didn't use it, but uh, because the uh, trees and the bushes to go very quickly, so we didn't have to use it. But that uh, grew the idea. So in, and in 2000, 2001, Karin Lundström called me and she was, wanted to start this project. So you could say it started 1998, but uh, 20 years ago, it started for real. Wow. So it was, it was from a real, uh, project started, you could say, or, or a real need for and, a solution. And, and, and what uh, the future looks uh, the future uh, for this method? I mean, uh, how are you going to develop it? Are you going to stay on the same mode or how you learn and progress? Uh, we will uh, progress uh, and in the future, I think we will use it more because of, you could say, uh, a sad thing the climate change. And we see already that we have problems with the uh, new problems with uh, rain, heavier rains and so forth. And uh, climate change with the uh, towing, warmer weather, towing and so forth. So we will have to use this mo more in the future. Yes. Do, do you think that there are potential application for other countries? Yes. Yes, I can see the potential in other countries, but we have a little different geology in in um, because we have um, little other soils like in Italy you had um, uh, you could call harder uh, uh, clay si silty soils in the Alpine region. We have uh, more soft soils, could you say? So you have to adapt to those conditions. Okay. Um, in terms of um, the the silic cutting installation, mm. is there a way that you can model it mathematically in terms of, um, for instance, cohesion and internal shear resistance? Yes. I mean, if we are to design this on, on in the office and using some sort of a software, what would be the kind of numbers, perhaps by experience, that we should put there? We, 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 we drew out these uh, 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 salix cuttings. I don't remember what numbers we got, but we got uh, 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 quite good numbers uh, compared with the traditional uh, soil nailing with cement and, and uh, steel. So we got quite good numbers. So probably you could use it in um, stability calculations as, as a soil, uh, uh, Soil nails. Yeah, soil nail or uh, enforcement. Soil info, soil enforcement. Yes. So I mean, b still be uh, staying on that on the same subject. Yeah. Uh, would be the grid pattern similar to soil nails then? 
Because soil nails they don't grow roots, and I suppose no, 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 no. I can't say, but we we tried something, so the, I can't say. Uh, the main effect from them is also that they use water, the groundwater. So so you could use some drainage uh, pipes to put in the slopes, but we use these. Uh, uh, salic cuttings, so they drink water. So you have to calculate with that also how much groundwater you have. So it's not only the soil enforcement you have to. I can't. I had. I don't have any figure uh, uh, numbers now, but a very interesting thought. Okay. Um. Do you think? by the experience that you have gathered by now, you would be able also to proceed on uh, using the method on uh, deep landslide? No. No. Okay. It, no, I don't Clear think so. Clear no, Clear I don't think. I can't, I can't, because they are not in this time. It has to be combination by soil, uh, as a salix cuttings and soil nays because um, these um, deep uh, they are often too dangerous so so and uh, they are so there are so, there are so many uh, other things that uh, play in so uh, no no I, I wouldn't dare use only those no okay. in not in this stage yeah, yeah. I suppose it would be the case of using it on deep landslides and then on top of that, just to yes. avoid the yes. style over yes. ones. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, we have also another question for the slope located at road 975. Yes. Where you mentioned that there were high uh, negative four waters. Um, yeah. The suction effect, basically. Yeah. And, and so the question here is that um, Whenever you had uh, some sort of a heavy rainfall, would that um, uh, pore water pressure change from negative to, to positive? Yeah. And did you notice any potential failure or any failure at all? No, not immediately. It takes some time for the water to come down. But the problem with this, um, the negative pore pressure works deeper in the soil. But in the shallow regions, uh, it is a sink water region. Uh, you don't have these uh, uh, negative pore pressures. So uh, therefore, you have to have these plants that, that uh, drink the water and, uh, and their roots uh, uh, make the uh, uh, soil more resistant against lateral slice but um, uh, so you could say that the problem is uh, su superficial and, and the negative pressure is deeper in the soil so we don't have those big landslides mm. and this uh, angle friction is new very new uh, facts. Uh, only one or three, two, three years ago, uh, Swedish Geotechnical Institute made uh, uh, a big study about this and why these uh, steep slopes can stand. And they come to the uh, conclusion that we have higher angle friction angles in these soils. Than, and is it, is it cementing or what? I, I don't know. Okay, it, it sounds sounds interesting because with clay soils you have this action effect, and then yes. of course poor dissipation, and yeah, after maybe yeah. hundreds of years you have yes. a failure. But it yeah, seems that yeah. also there is uh, something else in, 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 into into the game here. Right? Yes, yes, perhaps yes. cementation. It might be something that you mentioned. Yes, ab uh, absolutely. Okay. Um, challenges that you see using this method. Uh, Challenge, challenges for me is, as I told in the uh, last, is uh, to get uh, because I'm not, um, I don't know so much about biology, uh, uh, plants, to and I'm not a landscape architect. So I, we have to cooperate to make this work. We have to uh, make the others understand what our challenges are and they have to see 
how we could use these plants in these challenges. So it's a cooperation and, and therefore uh, you have to communicate. And uh, that's the biggest problem in our world is to communicate. We don't understand each other always as technical engineers or people <laughs> in, in common. So that's, that's communication is the key to a successful project, communication. Because you always have good technicians in your, your team, but how to make this team work? So th that, that's the challenge. I think I think that uh, brings us to to uh, a remarkable conclusion because I will stand on what you said previously and also now. It's uh, it's like a Pareto principle. You said twenty percent of good technical work and then eighty percent of uh, good communication. Yeah, yes. and and it seems that uh, whenever we have or we see a failure in a project, most of the yeah. times it's because of the bad communication, uh, yes. for whatever reason, yes. for whatever reason. Yes. And, and and there are plenty of cases that uh, teams that don't communicate usually when uh, people plan the remedial measures and then the contractor comes and yes nothing is there that no, you can really no, apply no. and i suppose all of us we have a good experience of that yes. i remember I, I had a similar case on the slope stability in the landfill where we had to use the membrane and the consultant basically had to produce two different membranes when actually they could not be manufactured and they could not yeah. be used. So yes. it's, it's, yeah. we, we've been uh, faced all similar problems. Yeah. So I will, uh, I will conclude with this then. 80% of communication, 20% of good technical uh, yes. Uh, yes. knowledge. Yeah. Uh, dear Michael, thank you very much for this uh, you, very thorough, uh, practical, hands-on uh, presentations for anyone that uh, he may or she may uh, think some questions by all means do um, send us an email at tfg and then we mm. will of course forward any question to michael yes. and with this i conclude thank you very much for your attendance nice. and uh, enjoy life uh, yes thank you kitos uh, uh, and uh, tak <laughs> I don't know in uh, in Greece. What was it in Greece? Efaristo would be nice. Yeah, Efaristo. <laughs> <laughs> Efaristo. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Our pleasure. Take care, yes. everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye. It has been a pleasure.